With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandsLots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The Eric Erickson Show. Glad to have you with me. My goodness gracious. What a time to be alive. It is really, uh, well, it's it's something out there. Um, all right. We got to get into the news here because... The Jeff Zucker situation continues to develop, but there's something larger here. There are a series of stories that are not connected, but they're they're worth getting into. Um, and so I need you to bear with me while I weave some stories together. First of all, we need to go back to Jeff Zucker. Uh, it's it's important that we revisit. The situation here, Jeff Zucker is out at CNN. Jeff Zucker was the president of CNN. Jeff Zucker had an affair with the chief of marketing, who apparently he ushered her around NBC, tried to place her at places, ultimately got her into Andrew Cuomo's uh, office, and then brought her over to CNN. It was she, the mistress who convinced Andrew Cuomo to come on CNN regularly with Chris Cuomo. It was she who did this. It violated the standards at CNN. But they did it anyway. They thought it would make great TV. So they did it anyway. Now, can you imagine... Can you imagine the outrage CNN would have for another organization that did this? By the way, why does she still have a job? Why does the mistress still have a job at CNN? Is it because it wasn't consensual? We know it was consensual. Or maybe Zucker was out for some other reason. Everybody's blaming Chris Cuomo here. Sounds like Chris Cuomo got it out there. But if the ratings were good at CNN, this could have been protected. I want to play you this clip. This is Gail King talking on CNN, uh, on CBS. This is Gail King talking about the relationship. It is highly unlikely two people at top positions or in the same department could ever stay on even after they disclose a consensual relationship, which, you know, this is part of the problem, but also why people keep it a secret. Yeah. I mean, workplaces used to be the number one place to meet somebody. Yeah. Right. Times have changed. Not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah, I'm still confused so if they're both consenting adults, but yeah. we're moving on. Hashtag hot mess. Yeah, you're right about so that. that. All right. Yeah. Hashtag hot mess. They were both consenting adults. You know, what's so funny here is that uh, Gail King works at a network uh, where Les Moonves notoriously uh, got women into relationships. And the relationships, they were all consensual relationships, but it was still predatory and abusive. How many women at CNN were deprived of promotions because Jeff Zucker wanted to bring his mistress over to get the job? So you have Jeff Zucker out at CNN. And by the way, CNN reporters are all upset about it. CNN reporters are unhappy. They don't like that he's gone. They say uh, Jeff Zucker brought a, a level of focus to CNN, a level of camaraderie to CNN. He boosted morale at CNN. Cult leaders do that. And now, like in a cult... Jeff Zucker violates the standards that are set for everyone else, and the cult is upset that their leader is gone. Here's Allison Camerata from CNN when the news broke. 
Yes, and obviously we know Michael and Amy and Ken. We love them. We'll be in good hands. But I do just want to say something personal for a moment, if I may. Sure. And that is, I mean, I, I feel it deeply personally, but also I think I speak for all of us and our colleagues. This is an incredible loss. It's an incredible loss. Jeff is a remarkable person and an incredible leader. Listen to that. This is a cult of personality. Jeff Zucker's got the ratings in the tank at CNN. Lost credibility with CNN. Before that, he was at NBC and, and harmed NBC. He helped uh, ruin a, a film studio. But he was a dynamic personality, and so they liked him. You've got Gail King at CNN saying, well, it was a consensual relationship. She herself works at a uh, network where the head of the network was engaged in several consensual relationships, but they really weren't. Ultimately, the women felt pressured. Now, this relationship is long-term, but the bottom line here is that these are the elite. And they live life in a way that they would attack you for living. They don't believe the rules apply to them. When small business owners in 2020, began protesting because they wanted their businesses to reopen. They saw the governor of Georgia, Brian Kemp, reopen Georgia ahead of any other state, including Florida. Florida and DeSantis remained closed longer than Brian Kemp kept Georgia closed. And by May, these business owners were like, well, Georgia is open. Why can't we be reopened? And they began protesting. The media elite attacked them, said if they got COVID, they needed to be deprived of resources because they were foolish to gather like that. How dare they? The elite wanted everyone shut down except themselves. Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, was willing to go privately to the French laundry restaurant to celebrate um, Thomas Keller, the famous chef whose restaurant it is, was caught hanging out with a crowd of people, maskless, while demanding everyone else stay out of restaurants and keep their masks on. The rules don't apply to him. Gavin Newsom the other day was filmed at the at the football, at, at the Rams game against the 49ers. He was without a mask surrounded by celebrities and rich people without masks and then lied about it and said, oh, I had my mask on except when I was eating. He had no food, no drink, was seen repeatedly. The mayor of Los Angeles took a picture with Magic Johnson, the basketball star, wasn't wearing his mask. He said, I held my breath. Do you really believe him? Held his breath for a pretty long time given how many pictures there were of him without a mask on. They think you're foolish. They think you're fools. They think you're stupid. They think the rules apply to you and not them. They can get on their private plane and take their mask off. They can hang out with other enlightened rich people, take their mask off. Barack Obama's party. There was nothing wrong with Barack Obama's party, except you weren't allowed to have one. When Barack Obama had his big birthday party, everybody else was shut down. But Obama had his maskless party to turn into a super spreader event. But they were enlightened people who had all been vaccinated. You hicks and rubes, however, how dare you get together? There is a double standard in the country. The enlightened elite don't think the rules apply to them. The rules are there for you not for them. The rules are there for your protection because you are not an enlightened elite. You don't have the access to the money, the fame, and the cool people to be able to live your life, so you need the rules to box you in. It frees them up, too. There is a coming revolt against the elite in this country. We see this in some degree by their shifting allegiances. This is what leaves people at CNN perplexed. How come Joe Rogan gets more people listening to him. Trust. Trust is why. Trust. They trust Joe Rogan because Joe Rogan is extraordinarily wealthy. 
but he doesn't come across as extraordinarily wealthy. He comes across as a man of the people, relatable, willing to relate, willing to not be condescending, willing to not be judgy about the people who don't wear a mask or take a vaccine, where CNN is condemnatory. There is a double standard. And if they're not going to live up to the standard they make everyone else live up to, no one's going to live up to the standard. Teachers unions are another way. They want you to force your kids to be in masks. They want you to force your kids to get vaccines. But yet they don't want to, they don't want teachers punished if they don't do the same thing. They want to protect teachers. They want to live by a double standard as well. Elected officials are notorious about this. The mayor of Austin, Texas, ordered everyone to stay home and away from parties and then flew on a private jet to Cancun, Mexico to hang out with his friends at a big party and a big celebration while people in Austin, Texas were not allowed to and then got all over Ted Cruz for trying to take his family to some warmth when the power went out in Texas as if Ted Cruz could do something about the power. I, I here's, here's the problem. We, we have a fundamental breakdown in the country. CNN literally sent a reporter who I know, who's a very nice guy, but I think he shouldn't have done it, sent this reporter to a grandmother's house in Florida to demand she answer his questions about why she shared uh, information on Facebook that turned out to be surreptitiously from the Russians. It was about a, a Hillary Clinton protest. How dare she share this information? Why didn't she know better? They bullied a man on the internet who shared a GIF, an animated graphic of Donald Trump body slamming a wrestler with the CNN logo superimposed on the guy's head as if Donald Trump was taking out CNN. And the, you know, CNN, let me read you part of their statement. CNN reserves the right to punish, to publish his identity. Should anything change? Meaning his behavior. Pretty authoritarian. CNN demanded an apology from the guy for daring to ridicule CNN. Remember they all came after the guy who put up the video of Nancy Pelosi and he slowed it down to make her speech sound slurred and then they came after Facebook for refusing to delete the video when everyone else did? The elite don't think you should have the same things as them. And so the problem we have in the country is that there, we are more and more mindful in a country that famously has no aristocracy, where famously you can get ahead on your merits. The left in this country, the elite in this country, who are primarily of the left, have stacked the deck so hard you can't get ahead. You can't get to their level. They make sure you can't. They have become an aristocracy. And what's so laughable here is you have people among that aristocracy who say, oh, well, we should level the playing field. The inequality keeps getting worse and worse. And you know their proposals don't actually do anything to fix the level of inequality. Just make those unequal rubes a little more comfortable so they shut up. Bad things are going to happen because of this. What I find remarkable is a few weeks ago, Brian Stelter at CNN went after Radar, an online publication, for noting Jeff Zucker's affair with this woman. It was shameful that Radar should expose this. And now everyone at CNN is shocked and appalled that turns out Jeff Zucker was having an affair they all knew about. And they're upset that he got canned for having an affair after years of railing on the sexual double standards in the office place. It's fine for their cult leader, but not for you, not for me. And it's fine for Gail King to say, oh, yeah, you know, we." it was a consenting relationship. He shouldn't have lost his job. Pay no attention to the women who couldn't advance into the office because Jeff Zucker was putting his mistress in a position of power. But it's okay. They want you stuck. It's like the fight against school choice. They don't want you in their kids' private schools. That's why they hate school choice. They say it's about accountability. Really, it's about they don't want your kids in their kids' private school. 
They don't want you getting the education they pay for. How dare you? They work hard and make a lot of money to send their kid to that prestigious private school. They don't want you there. That's why they value the legacies in the Ivy Leagues. We can shut out the Asian kids who do so well, but don't you shut out my kid because I went to Harvard. I went to Yale. I went to Princeton. They formed an aristocracy, and they will fight to keep it. And ironically, they champion the voices who decry the inequality, the voices of the elite who decry the inequality, knowing that those people will never actually do anything to break up that new American aristocracy. You know what would really break up the new American aristocracy? Electing people who favor the innovators, who favor getting government out of the way, who favor shrinking the safety net and encouraging people to come up with innovative ideas to take out the rich and, and innovate in ways that, that beat them at their own game. But no, 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 time and time again, the people who scream about inequality in this country that the media heralds as, as the saviors of the poor are the people who actually want to preserve the status quo because they know it. They just don't like that you know it, that they think they're better, and they think that them in charge makes the world a better place. That's why so many people at CNN are upset Jeff Zucker is out. They really thought he did a good job. Pay no attention to the ratings. I want to cut corners and just get to the chase. A lot of you hear podcast ads and radio ads for Bull and Branch, and you're thinking, eh, they're just telling you it because they're getting paid. I'm actually telling you it because I'm a customer. We actually have Bull and Branch sheets, and yes, they are an ad. Yes, this is an ad, but yes, I really am a customer. I only like to do ads for companies that I really like, and I love Bull and Branch. So does my wife. My wife actually heard the ads, and she wanted to try the sheets, and now they are the sheets in our house. Bull and Branch does not qu cut corners. They make super soft, wonderful sheets. They use the softest organic cotton they can find. They get better with every wash. They soften and soften and soften, and they only use 100% sustainable raw materials. They're the first fair trade certified manufacturer of linen. You can feel as good about your Bowling Branch sheets as they feel against your skin. They are so soft. They don't get too hot. They don't get too cold. They're just great. And every wash improves them. That, I'm telling you, is one of the coolest things about these sheets. It's like sleeping on a new bed every time you wash the sheets. It's great. Now, you can experience the best sheets you've ever felt at BowlinBranch.com. Get 15% off your first set of sheets when you use the promo code ERIC at checkout. That's BowlinBranch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, Branch.com, promo code ERIC, E-R-I-C-K. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson. The phone number is 877-97-ERIC, 877-973-7425. What I find very funny, by the way, well, and, and hopefully I can let this Jeff Zucker stuff go, is, you know, he is largely responsible for the rise of Donald Trump. Jeff Zucker put him in at the Apprentice, and then gave him wall-to-wall -wall free coverage at CNN in the Republican primary. And then it seems like turned the network completely against Trump when it didn't sit well with the other elites, and they were in at risk of blaming Zucker, so Zucker had to turn on his friend Trump to placate the elite. Uh, one just very quick word here, and, and I'll move on. You know, I worked at CNN for several years, have a lot of friends there, have a lot of respect for a lot of the hard news reporting that they do. But the network has tried to become MSNBC and has become an elite level of MSNBC where they pretend that they're not partisan, and they are. Uh, if they want to know why Joe Rogan has so many more listeners and viewers than CNN, uh, they should start with trust. And maybe instead of being condescending to partisans they disagree with, maybe try to understand and relate to them instead of just presuming that within the narratives they're framing, uh, Trump supporters, conservatives, small business owners, they're the antagonists. It's what they do. Howdy, welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-97-ERIC, 877-973-7425. A number of years ago, I was fortunate enough to be invited on a trip um, and wound up in Berlin. 
I had never been to Berlin before. When I was growing up in Dubai, uh, West Berlin obviously was controlled by the Allied powers, but uh, East Berlin was still firmly communist and under control of the East Germans and the Soviets. Never went there. I had been through West Germany a lot, and then they united, and I just hadn't been back since the country unified until some years ago. Went from Munich to Berlin and got to be able to wander around Berlin by myself. Took a camera with me and stumbled into the Holocaust Memorial there. The Memorial uh, to the Slain Jews, I believe they call it something like that. Or Memorial to the Murdered Jews. And it is a series of dark gray concrete blocks of various shapes in kind of a sunken ground. It It's hard to describe, and it's very modernist, cubist, but it's deeply moving when you get in there into this maze of these gray blocks that blot out the, the sunshine and cast shadows. And as I was walking around inside there, I noticed on one of the blocks someone with a blue marker had drawn swat stickers, the Nazi symbol, in Berlin in the 21st century. Last week was the Holocaust Remembrance Day, and someone went to Union Station in Washington, D.C., and drew giant swat stickers on the columns at Union Station. A man arrested last week, this from the Washington Examiner, for vandalizing Washington's Union Station with SWAT stickers is a Mexican citizen with a 15-year criminal record who has been deported twice but still does not meet the Biden administration's standards for arrest or removal. Geraldo Pando, 34, was arrested on January 28th and charged with the display of certain emblems and defacing public-private property for drawing the Nazi symbol on the exterior walls of the train station just blocks from the U.S. Capitol. The incident happened one day after the International Holocaust Remembrance Day and is being investigated as a hate crime. Arrest records obtained exclusively by the Washington Examiner reveal that Pando had an extensive 35-page criminal history in Colorado before he arrived in D.C. recently. Despite his record, ICE officials did not attempt to take him into federal custody after his Union Station arrest so he could face deportation proceedings in court. They instead allowed him to remain in the United States. This is getting absurd. First of all, we have a rise around the world in Holocaust denialism. On the left and the far left and the far right, Holocaust denialism. We got Whoopi Goldberg, who is so entrenched in wokeism. She essentially was gave Adolf Hitler a pass and called it just white on white crime, what he did, white on white hate. Now, she apologized for it. She shouldn't have been suspended, but that's what you get with the social justice warriors these days who look at everything through an intersectional lens. Oh, the Jews. And the, the, the Nazis, that they one couldn't be oppressed and the other oppressed. There was just white-on-white white violence. Have a rise of anti-Semitism around the world. But then there's the other context here. This is a repeat criminal, illegal alien who has no business in this country, and the Biden administration won't do anything about it. That, my friends, is a real problem. It is a problem repeatedly during Democratic administrations where they take such a light touch to illegal immigration because they're scared of alienating Hispanic Latino voters who might vote for them, and they misunderstand that those voters tend to be the ones who want the harshest approach on illegal immigration. Why? Because they took the time to come here illegally. It's remarkable. And then, of course, there's the situation at the border. Border patrol agents are in an uproar. Secretary Mayorkas of Homeland Security went to the border and was overheard last week talking about how bad the border situation is, actually admitted 
it was the worst it has ever been, that the seasonal wave of illegal immigrants coming into the United States was actually far worse than had ever happened. And it showed no signs of winding down. And yet this administration refuses, refuses to take any action to deal with the situation. They won't secure the border. Why? They need to secure the border. It's becoming a crime situation. It's becoming a crime wave. And then there was a report last week about uh, the the non-Central and South American people who are coming into the country. I mentioned this yesterday. Uh, They found Ukrainians and Russians at the border. Thankfully, those were caught. But how many weren't? We don't know. Because the border is porous. This is absurd, and it's still a campaign issue, and the Republicans still need to capitalize on this issue. They should. But then there's the larger issue here of this guy and the SWAT stickers. Y'all, we as a people, oftentimes, we, we tend to be, we forget history. There's that famous saying that history will repeat itself. History doesn't really repeat itself. It just echoes a lot. In 1936, the International Olympic Committee let Nazi Germany host the the Summer Olympics. And Nazi Germany used it as their coming out party to show what a, a modernist regime after World War I could move on and do. Within three years, there was World War III or World War II. Now... We've got the International Olympic Committee, a, 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 a group of corrupt people to begin with, giving the Winter Olympics to Beijing. Beijing is the only city on planet Earth that had, has hosted both the Winter and Summer Olympics. They've given them that honor. And Xi Jinping wants to use it as the Communist Party's coming out party, much like Hitler wanted to use it as the, the Nazi Party's coming out party. And the international press... We'll celebrate it. And within three years, I bet we're going to be at war over Taiwan and we will go to war. The reason is because the Communist Chinese Party wants to be a global superpower and they want undisputed claim to Southeast Asia. They want to be the dominant party. They want the United States and Western Europe pushed out. It will cause Japan to militarize again and get nuclear weapons. will probably cause South Korea to get nuclear weapons, and there will be a great arms race in Asia. And you will say, so let them have it. Except the Chinese don't want to just be a regional power. The Chinese want to be a global power, much like the Soviets did. And pretty soon, we will find them on our doorstep in the Caribbean. There's already a rumor afoot that Barbados, which has thrown off the Queen of England as their leader, is declared itself a republic, and the Chinese are dumping money in there in hopes of getting a military base in the Caribbean, near Venezuela. Uh, Equatorial Guinea is allowing China an Atlantic Sea naval base. It'll be their first in the Atlantic. They view us as weak, and who can blame them? I mean, we're, we're, we're busy over here with critical theory and teaching kids to hate this country. Who can blame them for thinking we're, we're weak? And there are some voices on the left or the right who think, yeah, might as well let China have it. Look at us. No, you don't want China to have it. How little we for, remember. History doesn't repeat itself, but it sure does echo. You've got the Russians in Ukraine. Listen, nobody wants to go to war over Ukraine. Nobody does. But small surrenders over time, give you very big wars. Vladimir Putin doesn't want just Ukraine. He wants an end to NATO. He wants an end to Eastern Europeans looking west. He wants them to look east at Russia. He wants them to abandon their trade deals with us and get trade deals with him. He wants them subservient to Russia. Russians, historically, going back before the Soviet Union, viewed themselves as having a sphere of power and influence that extended into Eastern Europe. Vladimir Putin is headed to the Olympics. Most Western powers are engaged in a diplomatic boycott. Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping want an axis of evil of their own. You'll see Putin go into Ukraine and China 
and Xi go into Taiwan and we will be helpless and twiddle our thumbs and they will expand from there. The Iranians will join forces with them and the Iranians will spread. The Iranians are engaged in more explicit terrorist attacks in the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia using their proxies, the Houthi and Hezbollah. Just wait. When the United States sits back and looks inward and says, oh, well, we're so screwed up, we can't do anything abroad, other people take advantage of it. And unfortunately for us, the other people and the other powers taking advantage of it are hostile to us and will put us at very bad position if we don't stand up. But Biden is too old to do anything about it. The nation is on the verge of bankruptcy and Republicans are squabbling over whether or not we need to fight internally on on a bunch of stuff and, and give up the external game. You can do both. You can fight against critical theory in this country and the wokes and still maintain a strong presence abroad. The people who would have us give up dealing with Europe and Asia because those nations and those regions, they've just gone woke, they've gone so far left, they're irredeemable. You ain't seen nothing yet. Wait until China and Russia dominate. None of us alive right now under 45 or so remember inflation. Some of us remember the Cold War. But not a single person right now really remembers what the world was like before the United States was the dominant superpower on the planet. Yeah, we remember to some degree where there were two of us, the Soviets and the Americans. But the Soviets, now the Russians and the Chinese want to displace us all together. And a lot of people are willing to throw in the towel and say, oh, we just need to deal with our internal stuff. We'll be back on the world stage. No, you won't. They won't let you. And you won't like it. When suddenly you're no longer the biggest trading power on the planet and you're no longer the reserve currency on the planet and you're no longer a standard bearer for freedom around the world, you're no longer what you used to be and you have no memory of what used to be. History does and history will echo back if we stay weak and go wobbly and Biden right now and a lot of Republicans, frankly, want to do that. It's not going to go well for us if that happens. Now, I want to tell you about the Eden Pure Thunderstorm. If you go to EdenPureDeals.com, you'll be greeted with a box. That box will ask you for a code, and your code is ERIC3. You do that, and you can get three of the Eden Pure Thunderstorms. It's an air purifier, filterless, no less. You don't have to buy a subscription to filters. Just every few months, you wipe it out. These things are not giant. You can hold one in the palm of your hand. In fact, it's very portable. I take one with me in my suitcase when I travel for the rental car, if the rental car stinks, or the hotel room, if it's musty, because it doesn't just eliminate odors. It gets rid of the mildew, the bacteria, the mold that's in your hotel room or in your house or in your basement. You can get three of them, one for upstairs, one for downstairs, one for that basement, or one to travel with. Keep it in your car. Go to EdenPureDeals.com. And then at checkout, after you put the thunderstorm in your checkout, the three-pack, you will put in the discount code ERIC3. Now, you see these three of them, and you're like, it's over 300 bucks. What? Well, you put in ERIC3, and you save $200. You get all three of them for less than $200, and you get free shipping on this fantastic product. It's EdenPureDeals.com. At checkout, the discount code is ERIC3. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. My goodness, my sister's texting me. There's She's uh, just north of Memphis, and there's a terrible ice storm blowing through. Trees falling everywhere. She says the ice is just coming down in pellets making this weird sound and taking out trees and transformers and power lines. It's Texas is having this problem as well. Y'all stay safe out there in this weather, wherever you are. I'm supposed to go play golf this afternoon. It's cloudy and miserable here, but it's not raining. All right, to the phones. Jamie, you're going to be up next. Welcome to the program. How are you? Hey, Eric. I'm good. How are you doing? Great. Good. Um, The reason why I'm calling is because I hear so much talk about CRT, critical race theory, that is being taught in our schools. But one thing that parents don't realize, and I'm a parent of two small children in Cherokee County in Georgia, and um, what I did not realize is that they can say, oh, no, no, we're not teaching CRT all they want. But what they are teaching is SEL, which is um, social emotional learning. Uh as well as all of the programs that our kids are using to learn on the computers 
um, they are all just filled with critical race theory language and programs and it's our our parents have no idea because all they hear is the buzzword CRT. Right. The counties are thinking, oh, we're just going to say we're not using that. And then they switch it up and think we're not smart enough to figure out that they're still teaching yeah. our children. You know, this was <laughs> the same bo- playbook with Common Core where they're teaching Common Core, but they changed the name. It's, oh, we're not teaching Common Core. We're teaching Community Core instead. And it was the same thing. Uh, You know, there's also, uh, they're not just the social, emotional learning, SEL stuff. There's the DEI stuff, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Because who's opposed to diversity, equity, and inclusion, you bigots? I mean, that's pretty much their response. But it's still critical race theory. And, you know, so there's a report, Jamie. Thank you for this, by the way. Thanks for calling in on this. There's a report out of California in Los Angeles that uh, they've they've stopped some very popular classes and they're making Hispanic students go into critical race theory classes where they explicitly teach that you'll never be white and you'll always be oppressed and this is the way the world works and American institutions are systemically racist and the Hispanic kids are furious. They don't want it. They think it's nonsense and garbage as well. The left is playing with fire on this and they don't even realize it. It's beyond... The, the familiar backlash uh, that they will get, and it, it is driving people across the aisle to the Republican side. Uh, you, what they don't understand is that in teaching kids that they have been and always will be oppressed, and the system is systemically racist, that these kids understand at the heart of the United States has always been this idea of the meritocracy. And they know they can get ahead. And so they know in their success that they can advance. And so what the teachers must be saying is wrong. And the irony here, the beautiful irony, is that it then casts doubt on everything else the teachers are teaching. It fundamentally destabilizes the entire system. But, you know, the the, the rich irony here is that after years of affirmative action and everything else, Essentially, what the left is doing is telling these people, you'll never get ahead, even with affirmative action. The whole system is racist. So if the whole system is racist, affirmative action, isn't that racist? Well, I mean, whether you look at the, the Brian Flores situation down with the Miami Dolphins where and the Rooney rule where he's got to be a puppet who just goes in and takes an interview even though nobody wants him, or uh, Joe Biden saying he's only going to have a, a female black Supreme Court justice, it then causes all sorts of issues. It raises doubts. Did that person get the job because of their qualifications or because of the color of their skin? It puts them in a difficult situation. It puts them in a situation where they can't really get ahead because of all the doubt about their qualifications. And that's not a system conservatives designed. That's a system designed by the very people now who are teaching critical race theory. All right. When we come back, we got to move to Washington, politics of Washington. Kevin McCarthy, he wants a whole bunch of investigations into the executive branch when he becomes speaker. It's 2022. Things are still crazy. Things haven't settled down. And now you got the Federal Reserve and interest rates. You got the economy. You got inflation. A lot of banks won't even return your phone call. Let's say you're a small business and you need a loan for $750,000 or higher. You see an opportunity where banks, they don't even want to see you. You want to buy a building? You want to build a building? Reach out to the Frost family at First Liberty Building and Loan. They've been helping small businesses become big businesses since the 1990s. They want to help you if they can. So spend 10 minutes with them. See if you're a good fit for them and they're a good fit for you. Their website is firstlibertyga.com. That's firstlibertyga.com. Again, you need a loan, $750,000 or higher. You're a small business and you see an opportunity to grow. Share it with the Frost family and see if they can help you. Firstlibertyga.com. That's firstlibertyga.com. First Liberty Building and Loan can help businesses nationwide become bigger businesses. Step into the world of power, loyalty, and luck. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. With family, cannolis, and spins mean everything. Now, you want to get mixed up in the family business. Introducing The Godfather at Chabacasino.com. 
Test your luck in the shadowy world of the Godfather slot. Someday, I will call upon you to do a service for me. Play the Godfather, now at chumpacasino.com. Welcome to the family. VGW Group, no purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. See terms and conditions, 18 plus.